Hello, this is Brian Jansen. Please shrink the government LLC. Today is November 7th. Wednesday, November 7th. The day after the elections. President Obama was re-elected. Uh, Minnesota House of Representatives, Minnesota State Legislature was taken over by the Democrats. Uh, it was not a good day, a good election for the conservatives or the Republicans. But you know what? As uh, America's first uh, uh, naval hero, John Paul Jones said, Captain John Paul Jones, I have not yet begun to fight. My country is being attacked it has been a, uh, been under attack for or the idea of limited constitutional government has been under attack by the progressives since the 1920s almost 100 years in fact possibly over 100 years the progressives first put forth the idea of the national health insurance in 1904 they finally succeeded during the Obama administration. Uh, so uh, they've been at it for over 90 years. And they have succeeded by a continue, continual series of crises that are destroying everything uh, that uh, they have used to increase the size of our government and to <clears throat> destroy our liberty. You know, like I said, I have not yet begun to fight. <coughs> I, I, I still support limited constitutional government. I will continue to support limit constitutional government. And one of the things, that, the reasons I do is, and some of the progressives will say I'm a hypocrite for this, but I happen to have this habit uh, that I like want to continue. It's called eating. I am getting food stamps. I don't like getting food stamps, but right now because of the terrible economic situation that we have, I don't have any other alternative. You know, if things were being done in the private sector, you know, uh, charities and things like people like myself who were down a lot were having trouble. It was being done there. We were getting assistance from the private sector. It would be short term. Because, you know, I can't keep borrowing money from friends for as forever to uh, buy food. But I can get food stamps from the government as long as I want or as long as I need them. Probably even longer than I need them. Because... There is a big difference between the private sector and a government program. The private sector has limited funds, you know, and it can only help so many people. A government program has unlimited funds because it has, it gets its funds from the government's power to tax. The power to tax is the power to destroy. No. The government, the power to tax is a, a, a necessary power, but one that should be as limited as possible. Because what, what, the way a tax is collected is through the power of a gun. People decide that this is a program that needs our government should do and then you either comply with the government program and pay for its support 
through taxes or you go to jail. No. They put they put a gun to your head and says, you do this or else. A private sector charity can only ask for money. And if people don't want to give money, then the charity can't help people. Government can help people, quote unquote, because it can take money from people as long as it the government program that exists to help people exists. Plain and simple, as long as the government can abuse its power to tax, programs like food stamps, Social Security, Medicare, whatever they are, will continue to exist. I talked earlier about how we are the impending economic collapse that are, it is not far off. Well, it's going to it's with the election, re-election of President Obama, and the swing to the left. It's going to be be sooner rather than later. Because why will it be sooner rather than later? The simple reason is. The progressives, the Democrats, despite the fact that we're $16 trillion in debt, despite the fact that we have the looming unfunded liabilities of over $100 trillion of Social Security and Medicare, the progressives, the Democrats, want to keep spending money we don't have. You can't keep doing that. Even with the printing press, uh, but keeping our, our economy, keeping the bubble inflated, sooner or later that bubble is going to burst. And it's, you know, uh, it's going to burst because that's what the progressives have built their, their power on. Helping, go helping people that don't really need help or would be better off with just some short-term private charity help and being able to ha go back to the private sector and get a job on their own rather than becoming dependent dependent on the government. So, you know, when this bubble bursts, uh, progressives, it's all your fault. There may have been some pro progressive Republicans who uh, <clears throat> helped contribute to it, but 80 to 90 percent of, of the problems the, the cause of our impending economic collapse is due to the actions of the progressives, the Democrats, who have run our country for over 70 years, uh, who have controlled Congress for some, most of the last 70 to 80 years. And our uh, media is going to lie through its teeth and try and blame Republicans for the collapse. It's going to try and blame capitalism for the, col the economic collapse when it hits, just like during <coughs> the progressives in the, uh, uh, blamed capitalism for the Great Depression. That's bullshit. The Great Depression happened because government started interfering way too much in our economy. And that interference in our economy has only increased slowly but surely over the last 70 years. And <clears throat> sooner or later, it's going to have to stop. You know, I got to check the time here. We get, this is a 10 minute deal. So, you know, like I say, progressives, when the bubble bursts, it's all your fault, and uh, there's not a damn thing you can do about it. Try and blame us, the conservatives, and that bullshit line ain't going to fly anymore. <laughs>